Number 13, letter A. How much heat transfer is required to raise the temperature of 0.75 kilogram aluminum pot containing 2.5 kilograms of water from 30 degrees Celsius to the boiling point and then boil away 0.75 kilograms of water? All right. Um, so this problem isn't exactly hard or complex. It's just long. All right. My biggest advice to you on a problem like this is to view each temperature change for each material independently from one another. Okay. And view any phase changes as independent from any changes in temperature. All right. So if I were to apply what I'm suggesting you do, I would, I would view this problem in this fashion. I know that overall the temperature has to go from 30 degrees Celsius, from 30 degrees Celsius all the way to 100 degrees Celsius. Well, why 100? Well, because to the boiling point. Boiling point of what? Well, I was, right, boiling point of water, not of the aluminum. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna boil aluminum, you're you're upwards of uh, several several thousand degrees of temperature. All right. Um, anyway, so. I realize that in order for, if the water, right, but you got to think about the context of this, right? If the water inside the pot goes from 30 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, then what happens to the aluminum's temperature that is surrounding or the water, right? That the, the water is contained within the pot. Is the aluminum's temperature changing as well? Well, I'd hope so, right? Otherwise, it'd be a perfect insulator and the water wouldn't be increasing in temperature at all, all right? So the key here is that although they're talking about temperature change of water, that's great. Uh, you have to realize that the change in temperature of water comes along with a change in temperature of the aluminum pot itself. And you know this, right? I mean, you're, you're not going to touch a pot on the stove after you heat it up because it gets hot. So the way, I'm, the way I look at this now is I realize that there's two things I want to calculate, okay? I want to calculate the heat energy required to take uh, water, uh, I shouldn't say to take water, but of water, the heat absorbed by the water to go from 30 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. All right. And I'm also going to calculate then the heat energy required to take the aluminum from 30 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So this is the independent part. Okay. Then after I view those separately, we also realize that there's another condition in the problem that they're telling us that, that we're going to boil away 0.75 kilograms of water. Now that, my friends, is a phase change. Okay, so that's the third part to this problem. That now, then, then I'm going to talk about the, I'll call it the heat energy to take water and turn it into steam. All right, and this is going to be, uh, I'm going to be using the latent heats of vaporization. So there's really three parts to this problem. If you view it in this fashion, the problem actually becomes easy because now we know how to calculate each individual piece. And if you wanted to then find out the total, I mean, what do you think you're going to do? Right, if you know the heat energy gained by the water, that of aluminum, and then the heat energy gained to take water and turn it into steam, obviously you're basically just going to add them up, right? So this becomes like, this complex quote unquote problem turns out to be three simple problems. All right, so let's do it. So uh, to calculate then the heat energy gained by the water to take it from 30 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, we would be using the formula MC delta T, right? And now all we gotta plug, all we gotta do is plug in. So the mass of the water they told us was 2.5 kilograms, right? The specific heat is 4,184. That comes right from the table over here, where is water all the way down there at the bottom. Okay, that's in joules. And then the change in temperature, the final temperature was 100 minus the 30. And then all we got to do is voila, calculate, right? All right, so let me just move this up slightly. So here we have the Q of then the water. 2.5 times 4184 times then 70, basically, right? So this is going to be 7.3. 7.32 times 10 raised to the, looks like fifth. All right, and that is in joules. Now just be careful with your units and stuff here, especially with the changing table values and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Uh, next, uh, what we would do is then calculate the heat energy uh, gained by the aluminum. So we do the same process, okay? 
This time we're going to talk about the heat energy gained. And let me change the color here. Let's make it a little more colorful. Actually, you know what I should do? I should turn this into blue, right? Because I was basically, the water's blue. So let's turn that into blue. I'm going to then do this in black. So now the Q of the aluminum, right, will then equal the mass of the aluminum multiplied by the specific heat of the aluminum multiplied by the change in temperature of the aluminum. So fairly straightforward, same thing we did for water. The mass of aluminum is going to be 0.75 this time. The specific heat, we got to use the table. There it is at the top. It's 900. Okay, great. And then change in temperature again is 70, right? It's just 100 minus 30. No difference there. And then voila, we get 0.75 times 900 times 70. And we get now 4,000, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put in scientific, 4.2, uh, excuse me, 4.73. I'm rounding here. When I do my additions, I'm going to use exact values. 3 times 4, okay, to the fourth, and that's again in joules. So I took care of those two parts, right? Now, the last but not least, uh, final part here is to talk about the heat energy gained in the phase change from going from liquid water to then steam. Okay, this, this S stands for steam. I could have, maybe what might have been a little clearer is if I put G for gas, all right? Uh, gaseous water is called steam, but maybe we'll just say, I'll put gas there, and then this is going from, let me put this as L, liquid, oops, let me put that as an L, liquid water to gas, okay, gaseous water. So now in order to calculate that, remember guys, I have to use this formula up here. This is the latent heat uh, formula, latent heat of fusion or vaporization. I talked about that in another problem, so check out, I think it was number 11, uh, simple discussion. All right, so now um, let's do that. So now here's going to be the, uh, the heat energy gained from going from liquid water to gaseous water. That's going to be equal to the mass of the water multiplied by the latent heat of vaporization. This is a constant number, just like specific heat is. You got to look it up in the table. I wrote it down here at the bottom for you guys. Now be careful, but look at what how it's given to you in the table. It's given in kilojoules, all right? But everything else here is in joules, right? The value here in that table was in joules. So just be careful when you do your additions, okay? All right, so then it's the mass of the water that we're going to now convert into gas. Now don't use the 2.5 here, right? Because it says, and then boil away only this amount of water. So we're only going to boil away a little piece, right? I mean, it's not so little. What's that, about a third? So um, we're going to have 0 0.750 multiplied then by the latent heat of vaporization of, of uh of uh, basically converting liquid water into gaseous water, 2,256 gotten from the book, okay? Please just make sure, that's why I always like to talk out the formulas, right? The heat energy gained, all right, by converting liquid water into gaseous water is the mass of the water that was actually converted into gaseous, right, H2O, multiplied then by that heat of vaporization. So that should hopefully make sense. Now just take out the calculator not to belabor the point. 0.75 multiplied by 2256. And we get a value here of now uh, 1.69 times times 10 to the third kilojoules. Don't forget that. Okay. Now I to you know make everything consistent. Either I convert these bad boys into kilojoules or I convert this into joules, it doesn't matter. All right, I'm gonna though convert this into joules because it's less work. So uh, that's though straightforward, right? I mean, this would simply be just multiplying that by 1,000. It's 1 1.69 times 10 to the 10 to the sixth joules now. So now I got the three parts of the problem, right? Three simple, three simple mini questions, and now all I got to do is add these add these on together, right? So let me put that in red. So I just got to add this and add this. And when I get the total here, when I add those three together, what are we going to get? I'm going to use the exact values. So then plus uh, that number and then plus one second. I'm just finding the exact values. Okay. And here we're going to now arrive at 2.47, 2.47 times 10 raised to the, is that a three? four, five, six, six. Perfect. And now that will be in terms of joules. All right. 
So it's about 2 million, 2.5 million uh, joules has been gained. Okay. Now, oh great, there's a part B. How long does it take if the rate of heat transfer is 500 watts? All right. So now uh, let's just clear some space here. So I'm going to just erase everything except for the answer I found here. The about two and a half million. I'll just erase everything else. So how are you guys doing today? Hopefully you're having a great day. I mean, it's always a great day when you're studying physics, right? Okay, enough of the small talk, right? Enough of the small talk. All right, so here we have now, uh, <laughs> here we have uh, watts. Remember, watts is power, okay? It also tells us it's a joule per second. So you can recall the power formula as power being equal to the energy change divided by time, all right? Uh, in this problem, we're dealing with heat energy. So I can simply do a quick substitution here. I can do Q over T. I mean, they basically are the same thing. We're just talking about heat energy in the problem, so that's why I'm putting Q here. They're asking us to solve for time. So why don't I just do a quick cross multiplication there? It's going to be Q over P. And now this is it, right? I mean, it's so simple. Look, the what's the heat energy gained by the system? The total heat energy gained by the system is this. We just calculated it. 2.47 times 10 to the sixth. And the rate of energy transfer, aka heat transfer in this problem, right? Because we're assuming that this energy, um, however it's being supplied, is converted into heat. Um, and we have now then divided by 500. And that's it. Lo and behold, we're going to get our answer. So let's divide that by 500. And here we have now about, okay, so this is 4.94 times 10 to the third seconds. And that would be the answer. I mean, if you wanted to convert this into minutes, right, divide that by 60. That would be about 82 minutes, right? And then if you wanted to uh, convert this into then hours, right, you can divide that by 60. Be a little over an hour, right? An hour and basically 22 minutes. And that should actually kind of make sense, all right? You know that if you're boiling a pot of water, you know that once it reaches the boiling point, it doesn't take too long, right? And if I save the numbers, you can actually tell me how long it would have taken by just taking uh, that, uh, basically you would have combined the two values. What, what were they? They were, yeah, the, they were the 47,000 and then the, uh, and then the 732,000 uh, value, all right, that we found before for the heat change going from 30 to 100 for the uh, water and also for the aluminum. Uh, but in order to boil off, right, a third of the water, okay, in the pot, you know that's gonna take time. You know it's not just what, once you reach the boiling temperature, the water just doesn't all evaporate all at once, right? And you know to get, to almost lose a third of the total amount of water here, uh, it would definitely take some time. So I mean, the answer is reasonable. It would take about an hour and 20 minutes in order for that to happen. Um, so, sure. All right, guys, take care. Thank you very much for tuning in and appreciate it very much. Bye.